Welcome to Meeting Our Needs, the show about people and organizations that are meeting needs in the Arlington community. I'm your host, Nathan Bynum. Today's episode focuses on the need for environmental preservation. We'll be learning about three organizations that help preserve the environment here in Arlington. I'm here with Roy Geiger from Potomac Overlook Nature Center, Eleanor Hodges from Arlingtonians for a Clean Environment, and Michael Nardalilli from the Arlington Outdoor Lab. Thank you for coming to the show, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I wanted to start off just by asking the basic question, how does your organization help to uh, preserve the environment here in Arlington and maybe even beyond? Uh, can I start off with, uh, with you, Eleanor? Yeah, thanks. So Arlingtonians for a Clean Environment, um, is overall goal is to have, have people learn about ways they can make their homes healthier and more sustainable. So we provide people with information about what they can do in their home, how they can get outside and do volunteer opportunities to get involved in protecting Arlington's parks. And then we provide um, an annual Green Living Expo, which brings together um, service providers and products so they can bring all those things into their daily lives. Oh, nice. Thank you. Mm. Um, and how about Potomac Overlook uh, Nature Center? Um, Roy. The Nature Center is certainly a key element of Potomac Overlook Regional Park. We have 67 acres. We have two miles of nature trails. We have a picnic shelter. We have a bandstand area, stage area, and of course then the Nature Center and also our flight cage for our permanently injured birds of prey and some gardens as well. So we are we're an on-ground site. It's a good place. It's right here in Arlington. It's a great place for people to come visit, participate in our programs, uh, help out as volunteers, and it's it's close to home. It's, it's right here. It's, we're one of three of our parks, part of the Northern Virginia Regional Park Authority. And so again, it's, it's a place right here where people can come quickly and easily and get out and get out in the woods and just relax and see the world. Great. Um, and Outdoor Lab, how, how do you uh, help to preserve the environment here in Arlington? Well, really two ways. And this is the, Michael speaking. Well, right, the Arlington Outdoor Education Association, which owns the Outdoor Lab, the Outdoor Lab is a 225-acre facility out in Broad Run, Virginia. You may say, well, why, how is that connected to Arlington County? And it's really for two, two ways. One, in that we have a private-public partnership with the Arlington County Public Schools. So every year, 9,000 Arlington County Public School kids come to the Outdoor Lab for their outdoor education and science learning. And then secondly, we also have a series of open houses uh, where uh, people can come out to the lab uh, out in Broad Run. It's a beautiful facility, has a pond, has a beautiful stream. People can fish, people can go boating on our pond, uh, and it has a great opportunity for people actually to get out of Arlington and see more of the wildlife. What distinguishes our facility is that we are really out in God's country and, and having the kids come out there and actually catch a salamander and actually fish, it really tells a great story. So um, you're talking, I, I know Eleanor, when you're talking about Arlingtonians for a clean environment, it sounds like there's direct things that people can do to help the environment. And um, both of your organizations help people to appreciate the environment. Um, how do you see those things connecting, do you, or do you think they connect? I definitely think it connects, because in order to kind of have a stewardship of the resources, you've had to have that experience in the outdoors. So getting the kids outside, um, physically doing things in nature is really important, and also understanding how that connects to some of our environmental issues. And then kind of our one of the ways that we involve volunteers is getting them outside in parks. So going to some of the different parks in Arlington and helping clean up the trash and remove the invasive plants. So they've been in that places, they've experienced nature, and then they're helping to preserve them. Wonderful. Um, yeah, and how do you both yeah, and, see, and, um, see that? I guess any, any organization that owns land, like the Northern Virginia Regional Park Authority, or like our organization, the Outdoor Lab, we have to have stewardship in action. In other words, we have a, a been given or acquired a piece of land, and we've got to make sure that we are good stewards of the land, not only just teaching kids how to be good stewards, but actually mm -hmm. doing it ourselves. And at the Outdoor Lab, actually, we have a, a very rare ecosystem uh, that's present on the lab site, and we just acquired another 15 acres as a buffer to our property but uh, to prevent development around it, but also it's the top of Biscuit Mountain, uh, which is designated by the, the Nature Conservancy is one of the real rare sites in the Bull Run Mountains. So we're actually doing stewardship of the land itself while we're actually teaching the children to be good stewards too. All right. 
And like Michael said, for at Potomac Overlook, again, as, as, a, as, a, as a land based mission kind of situation, our first, my first responsibility as a park manager is the conservation and to some degree preservation of the 67 acres. It's, it's kind of a, a part of a keystone event because it's not just nat natural green space area, but with uh, Donaldson Run nature uh, area to our west and with National Park Service to our north, we have a fairly large green space, and especially when you're looking at the overall composition of Arlington County, it's a chunk of green space. And therefore, it's green space in itself for both the plants and the animals that are native to the area. Second to that is the education aspect that we're all talking about with not just kids, but families all together. So they can start to get a feel for what is this all about? Why do we have spaces like this? Why are they important? Mm -hmm. And then finally, the, that turns around and they can come out and be part of that. And in the case of a park, there's a little bit of more of that passive recreation, just come for a walk walk our trails, help out with programs, attend programs. Again, much like they can do over at Outdoor Lab or that when Eleanor encourages them to come out and help with a cleanup or whatever, there they are. And that's, mm -hmm. we all kind of connect together without doubt. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, can you uh, talk about a specific, maybe story or a specific, uh, maybe a way that you teach kids to take care of the land or maybe a specific event that perhaps you, you've, uh, you've done or you've taken people out to one of the parks and, and uh, helped clean it up, or um, something at Potomac Overlook where specifically you see the impact that it has on someone's mind where they think, oh, the environment's something that's worth taking care of. Sure, I guess, um, so one of the things that we do is we go into the, the public schools and we provide um, students with hands-on opportunities. So one of the lessons I do for um, the youngest students is just to have them draw a picture of their own home and then we talk about um, the homes that animals have. So it's kind of a, a way for them to think about what's um, happening um, in nature, because we then talk about how people are impacting the animals' homes. So then that points it directly to some of these spaces, and we talk about the things that they've seen in the, in the parks that they've been to. So it's been a real specific thing, because all the kids think about the, the trash they've seen and some of the different the ways that people are impacting the environment. So I think that's a kind of important thing to remember that we're sharing our parks and natural spaces with wildlife, which I think is our, for the youngest kids the kind of the, the first step. Yeah, that's a really mm -hmm. good connection. Yeah. yeah. And I think when I started as, as park manager a year and a half ago, I think the first thing that struck me about Potomac Overlook was the fact of the, and, and granted we do all kinds of great programs with kids especially and, and families and such, but the fact that on our site, there's a bona fide archaeological site of Native American dwelling, not dwellings per se, but there were summer camps there basically, and, and summer encampments. And we know this for a fact, artifacts were found. Mm -hmm. And so you can easily take the, the, the student and the families or whomever is your, your visitor and say, take them back, you do this big millennium leap back into what it must have been like, what Arlington must have been like back in 5,000 years ago or more. And then you start working the story up through the colonial uh, uh, arrival of, of John Smith and others, and then up through the whole revolutionary period, the Civil War period, all the way up today. So there's this, I think the kids grab it and they understand and they see that what we're, that we're just this link in this whole big long time stretch. And along with it comes the plants and the animals. And all of a sudden it's like, well, Okay, now it's my turn. What do I do? What should I know? How, what, why is this tree important? Why is this plant important? Oh, maybe I should turn off lights when I get home and save energy and because that's important too. And you just see the clicks and you see the light bulbs go off and that's what's really cool. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. You know, at the Oriental Outdoor Lab, one of the things that I'll always remember is going to see a uh, collage in Arlington Traditional School. It was about the kids just writing about anything they wanted to. And right in the middle of it was the best day I ever had in school was the day I spent at the outdoor lab. <laughs> and <laughs> it, would just, it, it just told that story so well that, that not only was it a learning experience, because it's a school day for these kids, uh, and so they go out there not really knowing what to expect, and they right. really enjoy their visit so much that it's, it's, an, it, it's a double mark for them, and they always remember that. 
we run fifth grade overnight programs, and so the kids come out on a Thursday from their neighborhood school, and then they, they uh, erect a tent, and then they sleep there that night. And so on Friday, then they have a whole bunch of programs they do, and then they go back uh, to their school and are dismissed from the school on, on Friday afternoon. Uh, what I like about it is it, it has this team building concept because they have to work together to erect a tent and if it rains that night and they didn't do a good job they get wet and so they <laughs> learn how to work together to, to achieve a, uh, an end result and the teachers tell us that the kids when they come out there it's like shuffling the deck because they are in a different environment and suddenly kids who have outdoor knowledge and experience they become natural leaders and to see that change where the kids that were in the back of the room now become the leaders and are, are really working together as a team is just a fascinating sidebar to the educational experience that they get out there. Yeah, that's wonderful. Um, one thing that I find is often when we're trying to meet one need in our community, if we do a good job, it'll often meet other needs as well. In this case, it sounds like those kids were really empowered because they knew about the outdoors and they knew how to take care of themselves and uh, the environment while they were in the And there, there have been studies that have shown that kids were exposed to outdoor education and outdoor learning actually are correlated with self-esteem. It increases their self-esteem, their leadership abilities, uh, and their, their social interaction. And so you have all these tertiary effects, as you mentioned. Great. And I'm curious, you mentioned that you go into schools sometimes, and I know that, that Potomac Overlook has partnerships with the schools. I've sure. seen amazing maypole dances over at Potomac Overlook. Amazing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where it's this great big celebration of spring with all uh -huh. these kids dancing around the maypole. Um, do you have any stories where kids, you think maybe kids have gone home and influenced their families on how to pr protect the environment? Yeah, I mean, I think that um, kids figuring out that they've um, got knowledge and kind of empowering them and that's kind of one of the things I leave my lessons with is you know who else can you teach and I think that's mm -hmm. a really powerful thing for a kid to do because we we bring recycling bins into the the um, classroom and show the kids you know if can this go in the recycling bin or not so they're learning and then they can show that with their families and I think in general that's just a great way for all of the things that we can promote for how we can protect our environment to get bigger because you know it starts small if one person does it but if they teach their family or if the whole mm -hmm. class does it or if you know a whole place of worship or a whole office does it that's just what really can make these things work so I think that's just a really powerful thing in general for everybody so not just kids but everybody to make sure that they're spreading the word. Mm -hmm. Absolutely mm -hmm. I remember um, my someone came into one of our classrooms when I was younger and my sister was older than me and she heard about it and she started a recycling club at our mm -hmm. school and it went from there so it's this opportunity not only to protect the environment, but to give kids leadership um, and also to form a community around protecting our environment. As a site manager, I, I'm a little torn programmatically at times because I know that we could do great things and we already do great programs and such going out to the schools. And sometimes that's what you need to do. I mean, I can, I can have a naturalist go out with some of our animals and such and do a presentation or some of our our, our collectible items and and talk to multiple classes at the same time and, and so all of a sudden in one hour's time we're talking to 200 kids we're doing basically an assembly program will some of that go home you want to think so you want to hope so but as Michael was saying and and especially from to the extreme of the outdoor school outdoor lab where they can go out and be there for know, overnight or more boy when you get to bring them and you have the luxury in a way or the, or the gift, the privilege of having those kids come to your site mm -hmm. and get them immersed, even if it's just for a couple hours. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to be in the nature center on like a weekend, like a t maybe today. And if, if we've had, all of a sudden there's this, this family comes in and there's this little kid and he's the one who's taking the lead, come in the door. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden he's the one who's given the tour around the nature mm -hmm. center because he's been there as part of a school tour. Mm -hmm. So he's showing mom and dad where everything is. Oh, this is the copperhead, and this is the one. It's venomous, and da 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 da. da. It's like wow. a junior. You're looking. You're listening to a junior naturalist who's about eight so tall. Yeah. <laughs> and and but the other turn of the coin, and we talked about this before we came in today, is that because of the length of some of our programs, we're seeing the parents come in and say, oh, "I haven't been here since I was a sixth grader." Wow. And they're remembering and they're sharing it with the kids. And so the, the multi-generational stuff is going both directions. 
Nice. And yeah. then we have the grandparents who tag along and say, well, I remember when, mm -hmm. and this is like a whole different story. So it's great. Good yeah. stuff. It's like when you expose the kids to it, then it brings the whole family in. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it ties the, the parents, family together. Yeah, it ties the family together generationally because the parents had the same experience and they want to share that with their kids then and then they get into it again, which is uh, also healthy for people to enjoy the natural environment. Excellent. And I think when kids come to the lab, they are not used to being in nature, so so con so connected with nature, uh, that when they they're just running around, they don't realize that there's a there's a frog beneath their feet, <laughs> you know, because they, at the outdoor lab we have all all sorts of wildlife. Or as they're going through the woods, sometimes they come across a a, a skeleton of a fox that that had that died out there, you know, and it's like this is this tells them very clearly that they're they're in a different world, uh, and it's not that far away. It's right off of uh, 66, uh, and so the kids are able to go out there on a on a school bus, get there, and still have a full day of activity before they have to get back on the bus and go home. So the foresight, uh, and I'm sure all, all, all of our organizations really have built on the, sh the shoulders of, of visionaries, uh, Phoebe Hall Nippling, uh, who really helped, uh, who created the outdoor lab in the 1960s, uh, realized that what was needed was a special place for the Arlington County Schools uh, to use for this purpose. Uh, and it's really uh, a testament to that generation and then, then our generation doing what we're doing. But we need to build new stewards who will take on a our jobs after we leave because mm -hmm. we can't be here forever. And so that sort of passing the torch down to the, the millennial generation to step forward and take the role of the boomers uh, is really all part of what we're doing too because uh, trying to uh, instill in th this group that they need to step forward and volunteer for organizations organizations like ours and become leaders of these organizations that are the keeper of the flame uh, f from, from previous generations. Right. Um, that brings me to my next question. What are the challenges that you, your organizations face, especially surrounding the goal of environmental preservation? Because um, I know looking around, it's not always <laughs> going the direction of environmental preservation and a lot of people are getting worried because um, it's often going in the other direction. So what challenges does your organization face in that part of its mission, or that part of its, in, in, in a helping to preserve the environment? And I'll start with you. Laura. Sure, I think um, some of the challenges are um, here in our urban community is that we've got such dense impact and you know, so many people that we're really seeing things that are um, just having you know, tremendous impact in small spaces. So we look at you know, some of the invasive plants and uh, trash and climate change and some of these issues our volunteers are working on and it can get just a little bit overwhelming. So I think you know, one of the things that we're trying to make sure is that people have a, a positive way that they're doing something and feeling like it's, you know, making a difference over time. So one so of the... What, if, I, yeah. if I see an invasive species yeah. or if I see trash or if I, if I think about global warming, what what can I do as a person? You know, like because those do seem like huge problems. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the I mean the one thing with the invasives is that you know, so our volunteers are going out there and it's you know an educational opportunity. They're they're removing the invasive plants, but the the overall system needs management. So that we're partnering with the county and making sure that they're looking at the parks and it it does take chemical management. So you know, so it's kind of making sure that the volunteers are working in conjunction with the system that's managing the invasive problem overall, because then both of those things together, the chemical management and the volunteers can actually tackle these problems. And they've seen a park, a lubber run, where it's going the invasives have been completely removed. So really? yeah, so, so that's I mean so that's positive. Everywhere. And then I think the other thing is I think it's just remembering that, you know, every small action makes a difference. So, you know, even with something like climate change, if you can make sure that you're looking at what you're doing in your own house. So we've been focusing a lot on energy efficiency and, you know, it's a way that sure. it's an issue that people can, you know, do something tangible, reduce carbon and, you know, save money. So there's some, I guess, overlapping goals like that that can make us feel like we're, we're keeping on top of things. And I, I just want to interject mm -hmm. in terms of uh, what we have done at the lab is that, uh, we had an old uh, barn that we used as our, our animal lab building. 
and really with the help of the Arlington community raised seven hundred fifty thousand dollars and built an entirely new building that's LEED certified silver uh, out at the lab and that becomes a teaching tool for the kids too because we can explain how we got that uh, LEED certification and, and, and teach them about the building itself. Can you itself. explain LEED certification just a little uh, bit and yes, what uh, makes this building a LEED certified yeah, building? Yeah, LEED is, uh, um, and actually I don't even know what the acronym mm -hmm. stands for, mm -hmm. but it's really designed to encourage builders to build their buildings to be as energy efficient as possible. So the building that we built uses natural circulation of air so it doesn't have any air conditioning and it stays cool even in the even in the summertime. Wow. And then also we re So you can go in there and it feels comfortable. Yes. And, and then there's we, no air conditioning. Right, no air conditioning. Then we u reuse the water from the roof to, uh, to water for the tanks and for the cleaning out of the tanks. For the a We have animals inside to, to show the kids as well. So we're reusing the rainwater uh, for, that, for that purpose. And everything is designed to be as any energy efficient as possible. And so having a, a, a building like that that's a teaching tool in and of itself uh, and, and it's a little bit co more costly to do a building for, for LEED certification, uh, but my board was very en energetic and enthusiastic about doing this uh, project uh, out at the outdoor lab. And you get to show that off to all the, pe all the kids who come out there. Right, and, and explain you know, how, yeah. how it actually, uh, we reused a lot of the, the wood from the old building uh, that was there, and so we can show that off, and so it's a, it's a way of actually teaching them uh, about sustainability, uh, that uh, we're, we're on this earth and we've got to take care of the earth uh, and, and we've got to make sure that we don't waste anything. So the reusing of different materials from the old building uh, was a key part of the, of the new structure. Sure. And I think going back to the stewardship, I mean, those are some of the things that these, as these students grow up, they're going to be seeing in all the different buildings that we yes. use because it's becoming more of the standard, which I think is really exciting. Have I seen solar panels over at? Uh... We do have solar panels. We utilize um, my predecessor, Martin Ogle, was very involved with, and, and we continue the the, the efforts of, of solar energy and such, and the whole within the nature center, and, and something that makes our nature center, I think, very unique to other. The, some of the other nature centers nearby and such, whether they be, you know, Gulf Branch or Long Branch and others, that uh, Martin was able to weave a whole storyline about energy all through the nature center. And that's why our, our we not only have a nature center, we have an energarium. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when you think about energy, it, it's there, it's, it's the core. It's, it's, the, it's the first building block. Mm -hmm. And then no matter whether you're talking about, it's not just looking at, you know, turning off light switches and all kind of stuff. It's how it's, it, you go back to basic natural systems, plants, animals and such, and how, so they could survive and evolve over millennia and such. They had to be energy efficient. If they didn't, they didn't make it. And so we better come along and if we're gonna do the same thing, then we better jump on, on, the, on the train too. <laughs> and that's where you start to understand that, you know, I, I, we get kids, I, we were just over at, at Kenmore Middle School a couple nights ago and we did, we take our energy bike. So you want to see some kids all of a sudden realize maybe how important physical fitness is? Get them on a bike and all of a sudden <laughs> it's like we have this panel of lights and the only way those lights are going to light up is if you start cranking that bicycle. Right. And all of a sudden they're cranking, they're cranking, and then all of a sudden it's like <sighs> and then said, well, okay, you got to go to bed because you, you can't do your homework because the lights don't work anymore because you ran out of energy. <laughs> I, so and that kind of stuff. Yeah, I've seen that, and it's so much easier to light the fluorescent lights on oh, the yeah. than it is to light the old-fashioned the old incandescent. incandescent lights. Absolutely. And then if you try to run a hair dryer by a bicycle, you just can't do it. The, <laughs> yeah, <my laughs> well. Because it's because it, the hotter it is, the more energy you get. It, you, get the, it you get the fan, but you won't get the heat necessarily. Right. So uh, we're getting towards the close of the program, and I wanted to ask each of you. Um, if I'm a, if I'm watching this and I'm interested in volunteering and doing something for the environment, that I'll also perhaps enjoying it at the same time. Um, what, how could I get involved with your organization, and what would some of the things like, if if I wanted to get involved with your organization, what would some of the things I would get to do um, with your organization if I were involved? So it. ACE, um, we have monthly service projects, and the goal of those is to offer people a chance to get outside and do something positive to remove trash, remove invasive plants. We also mark storm drains with don't dump markers, and those are every month. Okay, sell me a little yeah. more. You said you get to remove <laughs> trash. That's the, so what, the best part about it is you get to be outside, and yeah. it actually really is 
I think, uh, energizing to kind of see a park. Mm -hmm. And you, you leave and you've made that park a, a much better place. So it's a chance to be outside, to enjoy other people, and to really, really make a difference. Yes. And then our newest... And I bet with a big yeah. community, you make a much bigger difference. Yeah. yeah. Our newest program is Energy Masters, and um, volunteers have a chance to improve energy efi efficiency for our affordable housing residents. So we train them and then they go in and they um, tangibly improve all the energy use in the building. So that's something that we offer training on every fall. Cool, so you can see the results of your labor and meet a lot of people who care about the environment. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Wonderful, yeah. Pretty much the same benefits, getting to know people that maybe are like-minded and are willing to give up part of your busy schedule to come out and do something at the park. Our, typically we have a, a volunteer work party every Saturday, each the first Saturday of each month, Saturday mornings. And again, it could be working invasives, and it could be helping with trash, it could be helping us maintain our trails. It's stuff that the public expects us to do, we need to do, to meet some of our mandates. Um, but it's at the end of the day, you walk away and maybe if your workaday life is something you've been working on this proposal for the same proposal for the past month, come out and help pull invasive species, plants for uh, at least by the end of the day or the end of the morning, you've said, wow, at least I cleared this much and it's, done until it grows back again and it's called <laughs> continuing resources but we have that and we've also been the the grand beneficiary of a lot of other volunteer groups who have come and partnered with us uh, the master gardeners who maintain our organic garden there at the park or the master naturalists who help in a variety of ways including a a, a shade garden that they maintain a natural garden so there's a variety of ways to get involved just call us at the park contact us and we'll we'll plug you in we'd love to have the help great and we just have a, a little bit of time left for the right. outdoor lab right the outdoor lab if you just google outdoorlab.org it puts you in touch with us and we do a lot of the same things that we talked about here not only removing invasives and, uh, and actually maintaining our trails but also construction projects. We had volunteers come out and actually build a wall of our right near our entrance. Uh, we had uh, volunteers come out and build a dock on our, on, our, on our pond so that people can get in and out and then also for our, for our uh, open houses we need volunteers to help with, with the kids so that they help them fish help them get in the boats and get out of the boats on the pond and, uh, and, and lead hikes uh, around, the, around the lab. So, so there are a lot of, lot of ways to get involved. So if I like working with kids, it would be a great connection. Oh, it's a, it's a great opportunity, and, uh, and, and so it's, it's, a, it's a real treasure. Cool. Thank you so much for all being on the show. I Thank really you. appreciate your coming. Thanks. This is Nathan Bynum signing off for Meeting Our Needs. A big thank you to Roy, Michael, and Eleanor. Please take the time to check out the websites for Potomac Overlook Nature Center, Arlingtonians for a Clean Environment, and Outdoor Lab. If one of these organizations resonates with you, join the cause and help meet your own need for community and contribution. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, Nate. Good to see you again. Yeah, nice to meet you, Roy. Nice to meet you, Michael. I hope to see you in the salamander suit one of these days. Hopefully on a cooler day.